everyone, welcome to the Elk Roots YouTube channel. Today's tutorial is going over something I have made hundreds of times. Yeah, hundreds of times. Okay, so let me show you what we're making and then I'll give you the backstory as to why I made this over 200 times. <laughs> so today we're going over how to make the cutest itty bitty boxy bags you've ever seen. All right. These things are adorable. And you can see I clipped it onto a little like a spiral rubber bracelet. These things are so much fun. Now look, in the last like few hours, I've made this one. I've made this vinyl version. I've made this flower version. Yeah, and I made a couple other ones as well. I mean, these things are addictive. They are a true scrappy, scrappy project. And we know how much I love my scrappy projects on this channel, right? I don't like to let anything go to waste, but I want what I use my scraps on to be actually cute. So why did I make more than 200 of these? Well, a couple of years ago, I went on my first cruise and it was actually a Disney cruise. And any of you who have been truly fortunate enough to go on a Disney cruise might've heard of the fish extender groups. Now this is usually organized through Facebook and you find your cruise and then you get in these groups and then everybody in the groups make little gifts for other cabins and then you sneak in the middle of the night and you go drop off the gifts and the little pouches on the, it's a whole thing. If you've done Disney cruising, you know what I'm talking about. If you're researching going on your first Disney cruise, this is gonna help you if you're a sewer for a great idea for those fish extender gifts. So on my first cruise, I decided that I not only wanted to make something for everybody in my fish extender group, but I wanted to make something for everybody in all of the fish extender groups. So yeah, I made over 200 of these little tiny boxy bags and I was just passing them out like candy on the cruise ship. It was so much fun. And when I saw people, like when I saw grandpa walking around on the cruise ship with this, on his wrist, my heart just melted. It was the sweetest thing in the whole world to see people using this cute little thing that I made out and about, people I didn't even know. It was one of the first times that I made something and saw other people using it, not because they felt like they needed to show me that they're using what I made, but because they truly loved it. It was also the only point in my entire sewing career that I actually thought about selling things that I made, but then I decided no. So here's actually one of the boxy bags that I made for that cruise. This was an extra and you can see I used my silhouette cutter. You can also use a Cricut or anything else really. And I cut out this vinyl and I just, you know, um, I did a heat transfer vinyl, put that on the back. It was just, it was so much fun. So for today's tutorial, I actually modified the size of this by just a half of an inch. And you can see it's just a tiny bit bigger. See that? I mean, I don't even know if you can notice, but this one is just a tiny bit wider than the original ones. And the reason I did that was because these original ones, while super cute and super fun, could not fit an ID card or a credit card in them. So by just, by just adjusting it by half of an inch, we can now open this up. I've got chapstick and I've got my Costco card. So this size will fit your credit card, your ID card, your cash, your chapstick, just kind of like the basics. So stinking cute. I mean, look at that. What? So before we get started, if you're not already a subscriber, please consider clicking subscribe down below. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section. If at any point you like this video, give it a like. If you have any other big pressing questions that you really wanna make sure I answer, send me an email at jessica at oakroots.com and I will get to you right away. All right, let's get started. Okay, so let's talk about the requirements to make these boxy bags. Now, I wanna encourage you to be very creative with where you go with these boxy bags. I'm gonna provide you with the foundation of the basic boxy bag in the miniature form, but you can take this to so many other levels and I'm excited to see what you do. So, to make these boxy bags just like this, this is what you need. First, from your exterior fabric, you're going to need one cut that is six and a half inches by five inches, and two cuts that are both two inches by two inches. These will be your side tabs for your bag, and this will be the exterior of your boxy bag. From your lining fabric, you're going to need two cuts that are three and a half inches by five inches. You're gonna need a cut of fusible fleece or batting or felt that you can glue onto the exterior fabric, 
If you're using vinyl as your exterior, you don't need to use any sort of fusible fleece, but if you're using a quilt cotton, I do suggest beefing it up a little bit. This cut will be the same as the exterior fabric at six and a half inches by five inches. You can see on this original boxy bag that I use quilt batting and I just gave it a very quick quilting and that held the batting to the fabric just perfectly. So having hardware on here is totally optional. You can use this keychain with a little lobster clasp. This is a one inch keychain with a half inch lobster clasp on it. These just make it really handy because you can clip it to your purse, you can clip it to your backpack. This is a great way for you to use this on other accessories. Or you can just directly connect a half inch swivel hook to your side tabs while you're sewing. I'm gonna show you how to do that in the bag today. Another totally optional but really fun thing to add to this bag are these little rubber bracelets. I actually buy packages of them off of Claire's. Claire's has sales all the time and a lot of really cool designs. I just kind of stock up on them when I see a sale and that way I have a lot of different options. These just make it fun because you can put it on your wrist, you can just walk around with it, it's not gonna come off, it fits wrists of all sizes. It's just a really fun little extra that is totally optional. You're gonna also need a zipper for this bag. Now I really like to get zippers that are much too long for the need and I'll show you why when we're in the top stitching step. So for example, this is a nine inch zipper. I would suggest getting a six inch or larger zipper for this and just remember that we are gonna be trimming it down. Some tools that are really helpful today are gonna to be a small one inch by six inch ruler. I'll be using Microtex 8012 needles. You're gonna to wanna to use any sort of erasable marking tool. A few clover clips and a hand sewing needle and thread. This is optional. This is just for closing the hole in the end. You don't have to use a hand sewing needle. You can do it on your machine. I just really like the finish of hand sewn closures better and I'm gonna show you how to do that in the end of the video. All right, so first let's go ahead and fuse on our fusible fleece to our exterior. If you're using quilt batting instead, then right now why don't you go to your machine and just give it a light quilt over the fabric just to hold it in place. I like to line up my fusible fleece with the sticky rough side up and then I take my exterior fabric and lay it wrong side down, right side up, just so that it's covered up nicely. Now, the thing with fusible fleece is that as, it, as the glue melts and contracts, it likes to shrink up a little bit. If you're using a thin fabric, especially if you're using a fabric that's not interfaced with any sort of woven interfacing, you might find that the fabric likes to kind of shrivel up. To help with that, I actually use this wooden clapper and I'll show you how I do it. So first, I take my iron and I just kind of quickly run it over. I'm just trying to melt the glue and as it starts to melt, I then take my clapper and I gently rub it over. I'm not pushing hard. I'm really just letting the weight of the clapper do the work. And then I'll do it again. Iron a little bit, very lightly, and then rub the clapper over it very lightly. This has been, in my opinion, the best way to adhere fusible fleece without having the fabric warp up on me because that's just such a frustrating feeling. All right, this part is good. Now, let's go ahead and prepare our side tabs. So our side tabs are the two inch by two inch pieces of exterior fabric. Go ahead and turn those right side down, fold them in half any way really, and give it a press. Do the same for the other tab. Open them up and fold each of your long edges to meet that center crease. There we go. I like to just pin the folds closed, just like that, just so they don't kind of lose their crease. Now go ahead and put these to the side. All right, so now grab your exterior panel, your zipper, and your lining panel. Take your exterior panel and lay your zipper right side down and just pin it to the top of your exterior panel. Now grab your lining panel and lay your lining panel right side down over that zipper. Make sure you match up the vertical edges with your exterior panel and then just include this in the clips at the top of your zipper tape. If it helps, go ahead and clip the side of the lining to your exterior just to make sure it all stays nice and squared up. All right, now we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew along this top zipper edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. We're attaching the exterior, the zipper, and the lining panel together. So before we get started, make sure you put on your zipper foot. If you have a machine like mine that likes to eat thinner fabric or causes a lot of thread nesting on the underside of your project, grab a scrap piece of fabric and just sew over that before we sew on our unit. These are called leaders. This just gets the thread pretty much prepped for your project. Okay, now grab your unit and we're gonna sew a quarter inch seam 
right along the outer edge of the zipper tape. So now we're just going to take our lining panel and our exterior panel and fold them so that they are wrong sides together. And you can go ahead and press along the seam by the zipper. Now we're gonna take this back to the machine and we're just gonna top stitch along this top edge next to the zipper at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, so now take your unit that has the zipper on it and take your other lining panel. Grab the end of your exterior fabric that's not sewn to the zipper and fold it up right sides together with the exterior to the other edge of the zipper tape, the tape, the edge that has not been sewn yet. So all the way up just like that. Again, make sure that the sides are lined up and clip in place. Now flip your unit over so that you have the lining side up and the back of the zipper side up. Take your other lining panel and lay that right side down, lining it up with the top of the zipper edge that's pinned, and again, making sure that the sides are lined up with the sides of the other lining panel, just like this. Now we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew along this top edge of the zipper tape at a quarter inch seam allowance. Now we're going to separate the lining panel from the exterior. So this is where having a longer zipper is actually really helpful. Open your zipper all the way. If you're using zipper tape, make sure you sew down the ends so you don't have your zipper popping off. Now flip this so that you have easy access to the side that we just sewed. I like to pin the sides of the exterior and the lining together. Now press along the zipper that you just sewed, just like that. Okay, now we can take this to the machine and we're gonna top stitch at an eighth of an inch seam allowance just along this other side of the zipper. Okay, so this should be what you have right now. You have your zipper attached to the lining and the exterior. Now we're gonna flip the whole thing so that we have wrong side out, so wrong side of your exterior and wrong side of your lining out. Pull your lining panels together so your exterior is on the opposite side and line up the long raw edges of your lining panel just like this and clip them in place. Now mark yourself about a two inch opening right in the middle of your lining edge. We're gonna use this for turning the bag out. I know that's a small hole, but it's a small bag. You'll be okay. Now we're gonna go to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew at a quarter inch seam allowance from the end to the mark on both sides leaving the center spot open. Again, I'm going to use a leader piece of fabric here because this lining fabric is thin and my machine will eat it. Now let's prepare the side tabs. We're gonna take both of these to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew along both of the folded edges at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Once you have your side tabs ready to go, you can decide how you want to add a hook. Now, you don't have to add any hardware at all. You can just leave them with side tabs and they'll be perfectly fine. So the keychain with the lobster clasp is something you can add on later if you'd like. You don't have to sew it into the bag right now because it is just a keychain that you can slide onto the side tabs whenever you need to. If you wanna use the swivel hook, you're gonna need to add it now as we wouldn't be able to add it to the bag at a later step. I find this option works really great with backpacks and purses. The swivel hook is definitely great with the bracelets, but it is not removable. So decide now which one you wanna use. For this tutorial, I am going to show you how I install the swivel hook. Grab one of your side tabs and thread it through the end of your swivel hook and just close it like that. You can grab a clip if you'd like and just clip it together. Now fold the other side tab in half as well and clip the raw edges together. 
So now let's get our boxy bag ready to be sewn together. What I like to do is pull my zipper halfway through the fabric and then push together my unzipped ends just like that. Now I'm gonna to go to the sewing machine real quick and I'm gonna to sew together these unzipped ends as close as I can to the fabric just to make it easier to pin it all together in the next step. So right now, don't worry about the fabric so much. We're only worried about these zipper ends. We're not sewing on any fabric right now. We're only sewing on the zipper. You can backstitch if you wanna make sure it really stays together. All right, so move your zipper so that it is a little bit more than halfway open inside the bag. You can kind of peek in there and see that the zipper isn't right against the edge because that will make it difficult to sew, but it's more than halfway open. Okay, now pull the sides of your lining just slightly so that the seam in the middle lines up with the center of your zipper tape, just like that. Now, all I do is put my fingers in the exterior and pull that to meet the edges of my lining. Just like this. You just want a nice flat edge with the lining seam going straight up and down the zipper. Do the same for the other side. So I just pull it so that the seam meets with the center of the zipper and then I pull the exterior and just kind of flatten it out. It should naturally fold together just like this. So this is what you should have. The seam with the opening for your lining should be going directly down the center of your zipper. Your exterior should line up perfectly with your lining just like this. Now I like to add my swivel hook on the open edge of the zipper and you wanna make sure you add this on the exterior side. So make sure you have the exterior side up and you're gonna slide your hook and your side tab so that the folded side is pointing into the center of the bag. You're gonna slide it between your zipper tape and your exterior fabric, just like that. Don't slide it on the lining side. You want this on the exterior side. You can use your clip to include the zipper and the lining all together. There we go. Now do the same for the other side. The other side I don't have a hook, so I'm gonna but I'm gonna do the same thing. The folded edge of the side tab is gonna go in between the exterior and the zipper tape, just like that, lining up the raw edge with the raw edge of my fabric and clip it in place. So now we have lining, zipper, exterior with the side tabs inside the exterior unit. We're gonna to go to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew along both of these edges at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Now, if you have excess on your zipper, you can go ahead and cut that off. So now we're gonna turn the whole pouch right side out through that hole that we left in the lining. Just be nice and gentle. Make sure to use that hole in the opening of the lining to push out the corners of your exterior. All right, so now you should have something like this, this little flat unit. We're gonna flip it so that it's lining side out we can go to the sewing machine now and just close up this hole by top stitching. I like to clip it together first. The fabric should naturally fold in on itself wrong sides together to create this crease along the top. You can just top stitch along this hole at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. You should now have your bag lining side out Grab a small ruler and an erasable marking tool. Now, we're gonna box these corners. How I like to do this is I like to poke out the corner so that the seam is going directly straight down and I have this little triangle just like this. So you can see I have the top on this edge, the bottom on this edge, the seam going straight up and down and a little triangle. So now we're gonna mark a horizontal line that goes across the triangle right there. It's going to be a one inch wide horizontal line. Now, you can make this bigger or smaller. If you want more of a true boxy boxy look, increase the size instead of one inch from side to side, increase it to one and a quarter inch from the left all the way to the right. That's what we're measuring, the left side to the right side. One inch is good for me, 
So I just line it up. So I have my three inch mark on the left. I have my four inch mark touching on the right. I'm gonna take my friction pen and I'm just gonna draw a line along the edge of my ruler. So that's what I have. I like to grab a clip and then just clip that corner in place like that. Again, you have a lot of freedom here. If you wanna make this bigger, you can make it more boxy. If you wanna make it smaller, it's going to be less boxy. So let's do that for all four corners. So the next one, again, I put my finger in there to make sure it's spread out really well. And then I make a nice triangle. And then I'm gonna mark so that I have one inch from the left all the way to the right. Go. And then I clip it. All right, once you have all four of your corners marked and clipped, let's go to the sewing machine. We're just gonna sew along our marked lines. All right, so this is what your bag looks like now. These little edges, we just leave them. I, they're so small, cutting them doesn't make any sense. And they actually provide a lot of great structure for the inside of the bag. So just flip it right side out, make sure you poke out those box corners. And there you have your itty bitty boxy bag. If you wanted to attach this to one of these fun clips, all you do is just clip it on to the plastic, just like that. And this is just such a fun little bag. And you're done. So if you're interested in sewing the lining panel hole closed using hand stitching, I'm gonna show you how to do that. Again, turn it so that it's lining side out. You can see this is a previous bag I made and I already boxed the corners, that's fine. Now grab a hand sewing needle. This is just, let's see, clover, black gold needles, size nine through 12. I'm not picky about my needles. I just need something that will poke a hole in fabric. Grab some thread. I'm gonna be using this hot pink thread just to help you see what I'm doing better. I also always sew with a leather thimble on my middle finger. Needles are sharp and they hurt when they poke your skin, so this just protects it. So grab a good amount of your thread. You can use the same thread that you used in your machine. Go ahead and thread your needle and then just pull your thread ends so that they meet. So I just grab the thread ends with my left hand, hold them against my needle with my right finger wrap it around the needle a few times, and then pull it towards the opposite end of the needle just like that so it slides along the thread, and then you have a nice little knot on the bottom. Now, grab your pouch that has the hole in it, whichever side you just start to start on, pull, poke your needle underneath the lining, and then push it through to the top of the lining in that seam, just like that. Now it helps if you can clip your edges so that they're folded down. So what I do is I just stick my fingers inside that hole, give it a little tug, kind of rolling the edges of the fabric in on itself. And then I just put some clips to hold the folded edges down. So what I do is I insert my needle into one side of the lining panel that has that crease on the top. And then I just poke it through that edge and pull it out. Now I go to the opposite lining panel in the opposite lining panel's top edge and I poke it through its folded crease behind where my previous stitch came out and then I just push it through. And I just repeat this process all the way down. Switching which side I am putting my needle in and always inserting my needle just slightly behind where it came out. You're just going back and forth between your lining panels. I actually did hand sew, close the holes for all of the baby boxy bags that I made for my cruise. But I really like hand sewing. This is a great task if you're just like sitting in your chair, watching a movie, you want something to do with your hands while you're sitting there. 
And you can see if you're using coordinating thread, you won't see the thread at all. I'm using hot pink thread on white fabric and this is as much of the thread as you see. And that's probably just because those stitches are a little sloppy. All right, once you get to the end, I just insert it one more time into the opposite edge, just like that. And then I'll kind of do a second stitch through either edge, pull it through, and then stick my needle through that loop before I pull it all the way tight. And then just make a nice little knot like that. Then I'll take my needle and I'll stick it into the lining so it's going between the lining and the exterior. And I'll just push the needle kind of as far as I can get it without losing the needle, making sure I'm not going through the exterior fabric. Pull it out any random spot really. And then just clip it close to the fabric in that spot. Now you can kind of manipulate it and then that thread will get lost in between the lining and the exterior. And then you can flip it exterior side out again. And there you go. And like I said, if you had coordinating thread, you would never even see these stitches. It's a beautiful way to finish a bag. So there we go. It is a really quick, fun, scrappy project. So I know a lot of you are probably asking, what do you use this for? Well, me personally, I will use it when all I need is my driver's license, some cash and some chapstick. When I go for a run or for a walk around the neighborhood and I just kind of need the bare essentials, but I don't want to bring a bag with me, this is a great little thing to have on hand. We also use this for quarters and pennies when we go to Disney World for the pressed penny machines. And you can make so many modifications to this. You can adjust the size. You can adjust how much you box it so that it's more boxy, less boxy. You can add Mickey ears to this. So I'm really excited about this because every time I post one of my ideas on YouTube, you guys take that idea and you take it to the next level. I mean, it's incredible to see what you guys are doing with the basic instructions I give you. So I am super excited to see what you guys do with these itty bitty boxies. So thanks so much for sticking around for this tutorial. I hope that this inspired you to go and make baby boxy bags all over the place. Don't forget we have an Oakle Roots Creatives Facebook group where members are posting all kinds of things they're making, things from the videos, things not from the videos. It is a great place to ask questions, feel inspired, feel supported. It's an amazing community. I am so proud of that Facebook group. So if you're not already a member, you are more than welcome to come and join our group. I hope you have a great rest of the week. Get out there and make something. Bye.